in today's video, myself and Ify from Ify's World, we are going to be telling you guys all the struggles that we go through in this thing called motherhood. <laughs> all the things that our eyes have seen. Hmm. We are going to be telling it to you guys. <laughs> and how we end up, you know, putting one or two together and still coming out smiling every day, irrespective of the stress and the struggles we go through in motherhood. Ify is going to be telling you guys the struggles she is experiencing in Germany, while I'll be telling you the struggles motherhood has put me through in Lagos, Nigeria. Hello guys, welcome to Hang With Oma, it's your girl Oma. Thank you for clicking to watch and thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't already, it's that red subscribe button on your screen. Please click it. A notification bell will pop up beside it. So let's also that you notified every time I upload you a returning subscriber. <laughs> thank you for always coming back. You're the real deal. I absolutely appreciate you. All new here. Welcome, welcome. My name is Choma Onya and I make YouTube videos from Lagos, Nigeria. I do vlogs, recipe, chit chat, get ready with me, showing you how an average Nigerian survives living in Lagos, Nigeria. And I show you I have videos from all ranks and specs of people, okay? Just go ahead and hit that red subscribe button on your screen, okay? <laughs> I know they find it like this every day, but, but I will give you real content. Believe you me, okay? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I appreciate you for coming. I am so excited, particularly so excited about today's video because it's a collaboration with my sister in Germany, Ify. Ify, thank you so much for collaborating with me on today's video, you guys. Ify is an amazing content creator, a mommy YouTuber that films from Germany. She lives in Germany with her family and she films content from there. One thing that we both do have in common is that we are both mommy YouTubers, mommy vloggers, and we both have two young kids that we are managing, okay? We are both managing family, managing kids, and trying to, you know, set our lives straight, even as individuals, okay? And in today's video, we are going to be talking about it. We are going to be talking about our motherhood struggles. <laughs> Even though I will be speaking from a Nigerian point of view, um, my point of view, I feel, will be restricted within Lagos, Nigeria, because I have lived in the eastern part of Nigeria, and I find that a lot of things are different. In fact, things that actually matter are different when um, I compare life in the east and life in Lagos. So I believe that this video is probably best tailored to motherhood in Lagos. <laughs> First, let's talk about it takes a community. That saying, it takes a community to raise children, is a very true saying when I was growing up. I remember when, if my mother should talk about motherhood, she'd probably say that she got help from neighbors. I remember that sometimes my mom will have to go out and we'll go to our neighbor's house and we'll all stay there and my neighbor will not mind, we'll coexist and everything will be fine. That it takes a community here in Lagos might not really work for you because you can live somewhere in this Lagos that I'm talking about and you probably don't even see your neighbor for entire months because everybody is rushing out in the morning and in the night everybody is coming home tired where do you have time to come and start doing never do this for me never do that for oh yeah is your case it takes a community in lagos most times to not work okay except for people that actually do have community because i believe that there will be people in this lagos that have community that works for them but speaking from my own point of view i do not have that community and i know that so many Lagosians do not have that community the only community they have are people that live inside their house <laughs> now mentioning that will move me to my next point people that have help Okay, it's not all people that are doing this parent thing that have help. Some people do not have help because it's a personal choice they've made with their partner. Some people want help, but they cannot afford it because you need a go to afford help. Some people want help, can afford it, but are so afraid. 
<laughs> what not you have heard that help have done people? You will see people that you employ that you are placing them on salary and you are treating them so well. Hmm? You step out to get something, they lock your children inside the house and run away with your property. <laughs> yes, it happens. And you step out, maybe you go to work, they steal. Some people even kidnap the children you put under their care and run away with them and you will come out and be looking both for your property and your children. What of people that now come and start putting things in the food that you are supposed to eat? Even when you cook it yourself, they will go to the fridge and drop one or two things inside so that you come out. Amen. So there are people that actually want help, need it as a matter of fact, can't afford it, but they are too scared to get one. <laughs> and now that brings me to point number three, outsourcing things. <laughs> Getting help that lives with you is one thing. Outsourcing things like getting a shelf, a cleaner, somebody that does your laundry, maybe they just come to do that particular thing and leave, that is their only work. Some family are fortunate enough that they can afford to outsource things and they do it and things are working easier for them. Some as well <laughs> want it but cannot afford it and they have to struggle to do all those things by themselves. The third category are people that can afford it want it but do not trust people enough to let them into their space because like i said we have heard <laughs> the things that our ears have heard in this country <laughs> if you are not scared of letting strangers in your space in this country i don't know what to tell you anymore I don't, especially in this lagos mad people are everywhere in lagos i don't know what to tell you anymore fam this fear of letting people in your space leads me to the next point and this is help from authorities. I cannot particularly blame the authorities. I blame them to some extent, but I cannot particularly blame them because we do not have a functional system. You see most of these countries that are developed, you see people, they have identification numbers that is denoted to them. So if you're employing somebody, you just have to have a copy of their ID card or whatever so that you have if they run away, you can use their social security number to track them down. They cannot make transactions of the employed if they are wanted by the security. Like, if they are wanted, they will be caught if they want to do anything. In Nigeria, somebody can do fake ID and use it and do anything they want and throw it they will. Like, there is no way, particular way to trace one person. Even with this BVN situation, you can put BVN on somebody. Eh? And the person will not use that account again and go and use fake name and open new accounts. Yes, it's biometric. I don't know how they will buy cut it. That person can even be receiving money with another person's account and still be living. See, with Nigeria, there is so many loopholes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The authorities might end up not catching this person if they do something to you or your children. So there are so many loopholes when it comes to, you know, trusting the authorities and yes the system is also corrupt there are some times that you will catch these people and they will still be able to escape the consequences of what they've done because sometimes they connect blind <laughs> we know it okay you know it i know it what can we do so there are so many loopholes when it comes to this authority thing also the major reason why i say that i am going to tell her this video to motherhood in Lagos State is because Lagos State is a, is a crazy place entirely. Okay, the fact that you you hear Lagos traffic, <laughs> Lagos traffic alone is enough to scatter everything for you. When we lived in the east, our late morning can be by seven o'clock in the morning, and you can wake up by that time and still comfortably get to work before eight thirty or nine o'clock. Believe you me, it's a thing. In Lagos, if you wake up by five o'clock, it's already a late morning for you, and I don't know how you make it to work by eight o'clock, even if you leave by six a.m. <laughs> Especially on school period, like now that holidays are here. People can actually make it to their work if they leave by six. But during the school period, I don't know how you want to do it. I, I seriously don't know. <laughs> Especially for people that live in Lagos Island and their workplace are far from. Like your workplace is far from where you're living. 
Why I say Lagos Island? Lagos mainland, I have lived in Lagos mainland for a brief period of time. There are so many alternative routes to get to where you're going to. Lagos Island is restricted because there is water. So we have only that main route everybody takes. Finally, um, I will talk about self-sacrifice in motherhood. See, I believe all mothers go through this irrespective of where you stay. If you're a mother that is restricted by funds, I mean financial restriction, you know that your money comes at a particular time and it doesn't come in bulk or lavishly and you have to cut codes. You find yourself always doing things for the children and the family before you even consider your own self. I believe that most mothers do this and yes, sometimes it affects both normal things that are supposed to be normal for you. You see me, I've gotten to a point that somebody dashed me money and I said I called myself trauma. At least half of this money, use it and buy something for yourself. You deserve it. You deserve it. And I found myself in the market. I made list and I put things that I want to get to myself, get for myself. That money finished in the market and I ended up buying only things for the boys and food stuff for the house. So yeah, you keep Putting, you don't want to personally I don't want to always do that I want to also consider myself sometimes but I find it that I always end up putting my kids and the family ahead of myself these are some of um, the struggles I experience in motherhood and just to tell her is I know some people will be like you are saying it generally you are not saying it particularly to yourself Yes, I am one of those people that puts my kids and my family ahead of myself. It is not a conscious thing, it just happens. Yes, I am one of those people that want help, scared of getting one, and probably cannot comfortably afford one, okay? And yes, I am one of those people that believe that community should raise a children, but I'm afraid that I do not have that community as things will be right now. And it is what it is we keep struggling and we keep putting one and two together and making life go on because we know go feel give up we we'll have to raise quality children that will be great children for the society if you've watched this video up until now thank you for watching you are the real mvp please do not forget to go to ify's world and hear what she has to say hear what um, mothers are struggling with in Europe and you know subscribe to her channel and show her some love okay if you haven't by now please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't please subscribe to my channel also feel free to share this video if you can I would absolutely appreciate it and I will see you in my next one bye I need you to stay.